Hi, everyone. I'm really excited uh, to have you all here for our yeah, one, one of those single cell omics Germany SCOG, as we nicely abbreviated, uh, abbreviated uh, workshops, um, a virtual workshop, which I'm very happy to co host together with Emanuel Salieber from Hiri and Würzburg, who's uh, joining me here as co host and will be uh, hosting the, the second round of talks. We're terribly excited to not talk uh, about some topics that well, we talk, we're happy to talk about single cell genomics, but something that we thought of maybe could call temporal single cell analysis. And I say a little bit about that in a minute, but just to show you the excitement uh, that you might have already uh, seen uh, during activity on Twitter. You know, we started this out, we just sort of announced a little bit, and then people started registering. I think we have up to like five, 600 registrations, or even more. And there's like a, a lot of interest in that, and just to visualize that interest, but also to bring across the point that, you know, we want to have trajectories, temporal, Look at my main contribution from yesterday. See, there's a lot of going on in single cell genomics, a lot of dynamics. So, you know, we need to have somehow get an understanding to that. So that's, that's amazing. By the way, if, if people want to talk about it, this is our hashtag, please do so uh, in a live fashion. So it's about dynamics, about temporal resolution. Um, but let me first say a little bit about the organization who are doing this. This is the single cell omics network, uh, which essentially has the goal to bring together single cell researchers, strengthen community, promote development and usage of such techniques and exchange particular expertise between the experimental and the computational side, which we often know is not as tightly integrated as we always maybe want, which I think in particular in single cell analysis is, is so important. And that's, I think, also nicely reflected in the selection of researchers that speak today and also in the sessions. And then obviously want to connect to big initiatives such as HDA Lifetime and, 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 and so on. This is the, the network, a whole bunch of partners across Germany, but now also goes going beyond. And obviously in those virtual days anyway, it doesn't make sense to be, be local anymore. Very grateful to fantastic management team. Uh, in, in, in the board, we're actually organizing this together with Jörn Walter from, from Saarbrück, Nikolaus Rajewski from Berlin and, and myself, and most recently also Joachim Schulze and many others in the fantastic steering committee. And in particular, I should thank for today's event, very explicitly Mara Kieke and Anna Hazacher from Helmholtz who have been really strongly supporting us in setting this up, getting this done. But of course, the, the whole management really happy about that. Thanks uh, uh, to you for that. So, there's a lot of activities in SCOG if you're interested in that, if you maybe want to be become a member, which essentially means filling out, like putting your email somewhere so that you get an, uh, 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 on the mailing list and there's some, some more activities if you want, but yeah, please think about it, register for that. There's a few fun lectures coming up in our virtual lecture series, in particular from, from Celia and Priska uh, soon, but today it's about temporal single cell analysis. What is that? Well, you saw the nice jiggling introduction in, in the beginning, so that's something happening in the temporal side. Let, let, let me maybe uh, go a bit more specific. Um, I think pretty much from the beginning, we've been trying to leverage single cell analysis to understand cell fate and trajectories. And, and you know, let's say we have now kind of our, our atlas working or getting worked out, for example, the human cell atlas, what would be the, the next step? I think this, this lifetime project that some of you might have heard and may, maybe have read just in, in uh, last week's uh, uh, Nature has this fantastic visualization, this, this very nice goal of finding trajectories in our single cell expression data and potentially actually leverage this and compare sort of the healthy situation with the disease situation. Then, then see where those branching points are and these disease trajectories, linking those to cellular trajectories and then actually really have a longitudinal analysis of patient data on the single cell level. So that's really a time series component added on top of this sort of what in landscape cell rolling type of trajectory component. I think bringing this together will necessitate not only a set of new analytical tools, but of course also methodological development. So I think it's really a fun time and a lot of very interesting questions uh, coming up uh, from, from, from that. What were some of the first trajectory things? I guess we all remember the pseudotemporal order where we have a bunch of cells that say, here's some, some type of stem cell-like cells that decide to go into two different fades. And we have all kinds of tools for this pseudotemporal ordering, monocle, vandalus being some of the first, and essentially just ordering according to random walk usage. This is nice, but it, it, it's kind of a pseudo, right? It's, it's not real temporal. So now temporal single synonymous, what would be the next step? Well, pseudo is like this, right? We see a snapshot of, let's say here, me in my last visit to Southern France, well, not, not exactly, but you see the guy jumping now and you see that's gravity going on, right? So you can understand the process even though you don't see a time resolution, even though you don't see a movie. 
But we all know, at least I know from my kids, it's not Google Images nowadays, it's YouTube, right? So we want to add this, this video component. Or as you could say in physics, we don't want to only have X, even a bunch of Xs, but we want to have P, the impulse or the speed. We want to have the full phase space to understand the biological situation. How can we get access to that? Well, I think that's where temporal signals and genomics could come in. So this, I think one of the most straightforward ones, if not, not for integrate, but for, for sort of adding things to that, if you now are able to do robust single cell genomics, where we, add, we just do it over time and are sort of maybe robust enough to not add batch effects, well, then we make a time series type of analysis. And there's different approaches for doing these analysis, such as pseudodynamics, uh, a contribution from us last year, Waddington OT, that actually try to take into account time series. And optimal transport and other approaches, I think, are currently being studied in this direction. So leveraging time. And I should, of course, say, if we don't speak genomics, but if we just go to single cell traditional way, which is based on microscope, there is, of course, time lapse microscopy and so on that has been or have been for a long time a temporal component. If we go beyond time series, yeah, how could we get those, those vectors instantaneously without watching over time? How could we get that speed? There's this other idea, I think, of course, many of you do know, uh, I think one of the seminal papers of the past two years, Arne Velocity from Joel Lamanuk together, or in collaboration of, of Stan's and Peter's labs, um, who will be presenting uh, today about that as well with this nice idea to really leverage splicing kinetics to actually give us some of, of, of these direction ideas. And more recently, Emmanuel uh, being, being one of those uh, contributors and uh, there's now different approaches from different labs. You can actually measure this experimentally, like this nascent transcriptome analysis has been a bulk technique now being exported to single cell, where you label for some time, like a short time window, and then you just quantify newly made RNA. And then you can obviously also get those derivatives. So I think it's a fun, fun time. And I think that's sort of what you can understand by this term, single cell analysis in a temporal resource fashion. So we have those topics, and I think we have a, a bunch of fantastic speakers that will actually be able to explain and contribute to some of these topics. It's, it, it's Dana speaking about not only RNA, but also about attack velocity. Nikolaus Rajewski from, from Bern, of course, looking into cell cycling, how we can actually quantify that. Caroline looking more on the optimal transport uh, pace. Uh, Alexander looking also into actually experimental quantification uh, of nascent RNA. Same side as, as, as Florian who's been explaining about the slam -sick technique that I just showed you the slide. Volker from my lab talking about um, RNA velocity modeling extension using dynamics and Joel, of course, presenting extensions and, and also his original work on RNA velocity. Really excited about the fantastic lineup. And I think it wasn't only me being excited, but I think that's why maybe so many of you are also coming and, and registering to that. So we're looking forward to, 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 to this workshop. Today's first session will be computational. So we'll be summarizing different uh, uh, um, um, approaches, as, as I just, I think, briefly said. There will be a coffee break, and there's opportunity to then hang out with some of the speakers there. There will be separate breakout rooms for that. But I really encourage also to use the chat function and sort of reach out to other people. And I should, should highlight that uh, because this became unexpectedly such a big thing, we also had a bit of a late minute, I'm sorry for that, uh, invitation to um, a, a few editors and we're very happy to say that Oli Bakal from Cell Genomics, Jing Wei Hu from Molecular Systems Biology and Marcus S from Nature Biotech were actually able to join us today, at least in parts. And if people want to chat them up or come up with ideas, I think it's a nice opportunity. Surely it's not a real conference and we do realize making coffee breaks work is a tough thing. And I haven't really seen how to get that properly going. We'll work on that, but I hope you can use this for some type of context. After coffee break though, se se session two is then about those labeling approaches with Florian, Alexander and Nikolaus presenting this being chaired by Emmanuel. And then we try to, to finish at uh, uh, six sharp. We have 20 minute talks, 10 minute discussions. 